Hello, everyone. Welcome to my sessions. So uh, this is a very colorful session, so everyone can be um, somehow release their mind from coding. But I will also show some of the code, because we indeed have already uploaded all our code on the GitHub. So you could also get further information after the presentations. Um, hi, everyone. Um, my name is uh, Jay Wen Chang. That I come from Taiwan. And uh, currently, I'm working in Harvard City University um, uh, of uh, Hamburg as a uh, scientific associate. And um, today, my topic will be about uh, Aufgabe orientiert Daten Klassifikationen und Gestaltung von Kolfian Karten. So, um, in English, is task oriented uh, data classification and design of Kolfian maps. So, we have a GitHub website. If you are interested in our algorithm, you could just download the, the script and run on your own data set. And uh, good to mention that this project was founded by DFG. And uh, it has not only just a work package of uh, local string values, but also we need to focus on the data classification method about the cluster and also the hotspot and cold stop analysis. Okay, so this is the uh, goal of the project. First, um, we wanted to have a, a new data classification method to preserve of the every local stream value that we can find in the maps. So in theory, if, for example, we have a thousand data uh, composed of uh, polygons, shape files, so maybe it has uh, hundreds of uh, local stream value that include in the regional of the, uh, the maximum and also minimum values that we can expect it. Uh, the extreme cases is we can generate 100 classes of it so that it can be every polygon individual can be separated. But we have a, a, a more automatic way to automatically um, separate all these local extreme values. And as you can know that no matter which kind of software package you use, there might be some commercial softwares that can uh, provide this some ready to use uh, data class classification methods such as equal intervals, quantile, yanks. Um, it's also called uh, natural breaks, and also some uh, geometrical intervals, standard deviation, and uh, QGIS. It also provided um, pretty breaks. So here is an example. Um, what am I really talking about is, in different of, uh, data classification methods, especially showed on the polygon data set, no matter which kind of color stream that you used, it sometimes uh, can show really different results. For example, here I use a polygon data set that shows in a city of Berlin that has showed, for example, how many percentage of uh, workers that is uh, located in the city, like where is the people really live that currently is working. So you can see from this map, the area that shows in red that it has a higher percentage of working age people populations, and the area shows in blue that is more like um, uh, people already get retired or not currently working. Um, so you can see on the left hand side, it is a quantile classification that shows more red parcels in the map. And on the right hand side, it is equal interval that can also show very um, different things. So um, back to the very uh, beginnings. It is the user decisions, like which kind of classification method I wanted to use, and also what kind of color I want to show on the map. Of course, everything can be done manually, that you wanted to highlight maybe a polygon here, but not somewhere here. So like in the middle, there's a local minimum value. Um, so that um, I will also give a further uh, talks about how to do the classification automatically. So here is a zoom-in example of how the local extreme values were not preserved. So here you can see that um, a, a central value of 1.83, which is a local maximum, that were categorized into the same classes as one of its neighbors, which has a value of 0 0.27. Because um, you could see from the map, um, it is the class breaks, like where the class breaks were placed, then the result will be shown accordingly. And here is the, uh, our methodology. The first step is we want to search where is the neighbors and where is the local extreme values. For example, I have a local extreme value here. It's called, uh, it is the local maximum uh, with a value of 17.69. And I wanted to identify all its neighbors and store it somewhere in the database. 
so that um, I also pay uh, especially attention to one of its closest neighbor. What do we define the closest here is it has the closest values from of its neighbors. So for example, this all the surroundings uh, value of 7.52 is the closest one. So this differences and also this data set of its origin value will be also preserved in our databases during the algorithms. And this method was implemented uh, completely in open source, so it also used Anaconda and also Fiona, JPR tree, spatial index to speed up all the searching uh, steps. So um, this is the first step that I want to know where the local history. And then I plotted each local history, only one segment on the X and Y diagram. So here is a local stream value, which has a value of over 5,000. And it has its closest neighbor here, around 4,300 and so on. So you can imagine that, for example, if there is a hundred of local stream values in the data set, there will be hundred segments plotted in this plot. So here is oh, how it seems like. It's just a data set, as an example. It can be any data. And then the second step is I will do a plan swipe algorithm from the global minimum to the global maximum. Like, of course, the user can define how was the swap intervals, like how the line segment, I'm talking about the vertical one, which shows in yellow, it will be swapped from the left to the right. So that it, the algorithm will also calculate it aut automatically how many intersect happens to this diagram. So in theory, the more intersect of the total counts, it should be the breaks that we want it to place because we just place one break and it can separate all the surroundings. So after the first break were placed, we wanted to remove all those segments which has been intersected to the first break. This is just for um, not repeating um, swaps for the segment that already be separated or identified so that there are less segment left so we could perform the second swap. Then we also find the second break which has value of 3000. And then we will iterate the whole process until the desire of the class is to, to be all uh, identified. So for this is the whole implemented diagram that uh, from the left. It's uh, any polygon shape file can be used in this method. Then the algorithm will do the first part is uh, the multi-part to single part polygons so that uh, only one pair of the relationship can be preserved. And then also the neighbor search and all location value identifications then they have uh, two individual uh, tables, which has been uh, illustrated earlier. Um, and then I will also do the table joining within the database that um, one local value only has one pair of the closest neighbors. So this is the step that I have been talking about. Then I have only one table left to do the plotting. So here is plot segments, count the intersections, and the intersection counts will also be preserved, and it will also be shown in the result. And then um, there will be two tables uh, generated. One is intersect table, let's store which value has how many intersection counts. The second is output CSV value that has a global view of what is the value and also what is the um, intersects, where is the intersects happened. So the whole process will be iterated. For example, if you want 10 classes as a result, then it will be nine breaks, then the process will be iterated nine times. So um, here are the results. Before we go into the visualization, I would like to show you the code. So maybe they are developing here that is more interesting in something that can run. Okay, now I want to show you just the prototype of the script. Just one plug segment part. So here is the iterate part. I wanted the data to have five output. Uh, no, sorry, five classes as an output. So now it's performing this web. And now I have a dialog plugged that shows, okay, here is the uh, city of Hamburg that how many uh, districts are need to be monitored the most because we have a uh, map that shows the deprived index. I will show you later, but this is the algorithm that shows in here. So you can see that, for example, here is 150 
polygons that is local maximum and minimum so that I have uh, every of the relationship plotted here. So um, the diagram in the slide, it was 90 degrees um, flipped so that the, the horizontal swap were from the minimum to the maximum or the other way around. It's also okay. Okay, so I closed the plot. It will also iterate the second, but I will just let it stop. So here is the result. Um, as I mentioned, the city of Hamburg, it has open data that shows um, where is the area that needs to be monitored the most, that which uh, is released every year, and this shows the map of uh, from average Deprived index of year 2012 to 2015. So, for example, uh, the red area that is uh, the value has relatively higher that it needs to be monitored. Maybe there are more people who is not working and also apply for the hot sphere, uh, or they have more children which has single parents or the children that they are needed to be taken care of by the social workers. They have this kind of data set. So that this is data that can be very suitable for us that because we want every polygon that to be preserved. And you can see that from here, the result shows quite um, significantly the aqua method, this map in the middle, that shows uh, the highest of preserved rate among all the data classification methods. So um, like e equal interval on the very right uh, button part, it has the poorest um, classification result. Um, you can see the data diagram that sh plotted the whole um, histogram of the original data uh, where the breaks of aqua were generated. So you could, of course, also compare this result to the others. Um, here on the map, I also uh, overlay the where the local issue value is uh, with the red one is the maximum and the blue one is the minimum. But it is somehow quite difficult to evaluate how the impact of, of our new method and the traditional one. So we go another way that I will talk about it later that we could calculate uh, how the evaluation to be done. Here is a zoom in example. Uh, the aqua method, it has uh, preserved the local maximum and also local minimum, both of them perfectly preserved. The equal interval is not preserved very well of the local maximum. Uh, natural breaks, it preserves the local maximum, but not the local minimum. And quantile also not preserves both of them. So um, it depends on the, your data set, basically. Here is the uh, preserve rate um, of this data set that how many of the classes, for example, from the only one classes, then how many of the local stream were preserved. So like we could draw a line segment like um, with the increase in number of the uh, total classes, like how the preserve rate changes. So you can see from here, the, the orange one is our aqua method. No matter relatively slower amount of the classes or bigger amount of classes, it all has the best preserve rate. Okay, so this is another data set that shows how is the SPD vote percentage in the city of Hamburg that um, from the last year election result. This data set shows more diverse because um, people don't necessarily gathering together where they vote. So um, it's also an example because we wanted to test through different data set to see how is the impact among the data of the structure itself. And here's the SPD result. So you can see from here that because SPD election result from this example, they have relatively lower total of the number counts and it has more significant result um, when it has relatively lower number of classes. And here is also a very good example. It shows the um, year of 2017 of only one month in July. Uh, where is the, um, how is the rainfall distribution in the whole Germany? So we collect the data from the um, weather things of uh, Germany and uh, it's a point-based of the statistical data set. So we display it on the point databases and then uh, we display it everything on the map. Then we do uh, interpolation into raster and then we also calculate it um, by each polygon of the district to see what is the average value of this raster data set. It's called zonal statistics. So that we could show all the rainfall data set based on the polygon because um, the method is implemented uh, mainly for polygon data sets. 
So you could also see from here that the quantile classification result, it has more local maximum and they show possibly different. And here is also a rainfall data set evaluation curve. And how the evaluation done, it is uh, done by automatically stripped. First, we read classes by the new breaks with a script, like uh, for example, we already uh, re erase all the original data into class numbers. So that here you have from aqua method, it has a value of four reclass result, and uh, then you do a dissolve so that it, these two were merged. So when you select by the location with the completely identical, then you can see that uh, this aqua method will preserve and this is will not be selected. So the whole process can be done automatically. Okay, back to the data itself. Um, we have tested through five data sets. The more are coming, and um, it is, this is a statistic of uh, attribute of the data. Um, here, you just need to pay attention of the standard deviation, for example, because standard deviation is a very dangerous statistical index. It can also be influenced by the data range of itself. Um, so we have to compare it with um, how is the um, data distributed that um, see how the aqua method can be uh, influenced on different of the statistic data set. And here is the number of classes where the all data of all the uh, local stream be preserved. So you can see that with a class number of 37 of the first map, that all the 271 of the local stream can be preserved. And this is the percentage of um, how many of the classes can be preserved among all the data set. So um, this project is uh, finishing the first work packages so that um, more are coming first. We wanted to see how the um, us user looking on different maps and where is the popular will be uh, concentrate or pay paying attention to and how their eyeball will be moved. So this is the, we will also make an evaluation of this with eye tracking devices. And then the f further implementation that, uh, of course, we already have a plugin uh, created on GitHub. And um, also, I will also in include this method into a QGIS plugin, of course, so that everyone can easily to use with a GUI and so on. Um, so here are the references. Um, and yeah, I guess um, this is, my presentation today, uh, if you have any question, you could always email me or r report uh, any issues on the GitHub. We'll be welcome. Thank you. Uh, yeah, herzlichen Dank, Ariel. Um, um, sind Fragen, are there any questions? Who of you no has questions? been using QGIS uh, in a similar context? Okay, and um, so what is your experience? <laughs> well, okay. Um, there, there are two, yeah. Okay, thanks uh, for the talk. It's, um, I think it's important to, um, especially with coral reef maps, because they are so suggestive and it all depends on the kind of method you use, and this was really clear by the visualizations. Um, I think it has something to do with um, like ethics of plotting, I would call it. So um, <laughs> that um, actually the plotter itself has to ask himself, because it really happens often that people just map out what they actually want to tell, so they have the story to tell in advance, and then they actually make their breaks. So. Um, it's nice to have another um, method that is apparently well documented academically, so thank you for that. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, uh, the data classification method itself can be also misleading. For example, what kind of classification you choose, and then the map shows a uh, house spot with a cluster, for example, but maybe some of the value itself within the list cluster is not really house spot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
I've um, been searching exactly this tool for ArcGIS. And oh, <laughs> cool. In <laughs> so ArcGIS, but unfortunately yeah, it's not in ArcGIS. Um, so I'm really glad to, to found something uh, for QGIS. And okay. uh, yeah, I'll try it. Yeah, cool, thank you. Um, I would like to show just uh, one little bit uh, how to run this script on the GitHub. After you download the data set, then there will be a Python script called class underscore aqua.py, and you could just easily type minus edge and then show the help. So that, for example, um, I wanted to have one data um, shift file to be given, and also the this is the field name that I wanted to do the classification, and also I can give uh, 10 classes as a result, and also 0 0.2 is a swipe interval. So they have four parameters can be given here. So that uh, after it run, um, currently it runs the multi-part to single part, it basically copy all the attribute table to the new polygons, and then it was automatically put up what is the breaking value and where it is. So the user currently, they could just manually given um, by the new breaks that be generated here. It's still not implemented completely automatically, like you could just um, get all the color ramps and also load it in the QGIS, but after the plugin was developed, I think it is possible. Yeah. Good. Vielen Dank. Ah, there. Yeah. Microphone kommt gleich. Wir brauchen. Just quick, what was the uh, 0 0.2 parameter? This is the swap interval. For example, this example is uh, the departure index of the Hamburg. The first uh, result map I showed, and it has a value which uh, from minus eight, 18 to 20 years. So it has a bigger range. And I, here I defined uh, 0 0.2 from the local minimum, uh, from the global maximum swap to the lo lo global minimum, so that every 0 0.2 will be a exempt. And also, so basically how uh, the, the bigger interval you gave, the algorithm will run faster, but maybe the result will be not so ideal as the relatively smaller intervals. Yeah. But you could try it out, I think it's fine. 